A warning over the ever-increasing number of ram raids around the country. Children as young as 11 have been involved in driving cars at high speeds into buildings, risking their own lives and the lives of those inside them and the people they drive past on the motorways. Take a look. It's only a matter of time until someone dies. That's the warning from those on the front line of the ram raid epidemic. It is an epidemic. A sense of lawlessness is gripping uh, not just in Auckland but uh, entire New Zealand. And this needs to be stopped. Business is down, hit. Everybody's struggling. I'm one of them. I'm afraid, you know, later or sooner, somebody would get killed. One of the real worries we have is that it's a tragedy waiting to happen. That was Karen Bright, the county's Monaco Police Detective Inspector, and she joins us live this morning. Good morning. Um, Detective Inspector, can I start by thanking your officers for the work that they do? I know we have lots of feedback that while this is a big issue, we understand that police on the front lines are doing all that they can to try and, um, you know, to try and stop it. Have you, can we start with last night? Do you have an update for us? Were there any ram raids you were aware of last night? Uh, look, I'm not aware of anything that has occurred overnight in relation to ram raids. Do you know how many, when they happen, how many of the, the culprits are actually caught? What percentage, say, in the last six months, 12 months? Uh, look, I believe last year that for 42 per cent of um, incidents we actually identified an offender. Um, I can only talk to our own district and since October we have dealt with 60 offenders. Um, 50 per cent of those are 14 and under and over, just over 90 per cent of them are under 17. OK. So the, the age thing we'll get to, but only 42 per cent of these ram raids were actually identifying who did it. But we're working really hard. Um, we prioritise these investigations and we're doing every ca everything we can um, to identify those involved in these. Um, it's really helpful when retailers have good CCTV, um, but we, we are investigating these and treating them seriously. What do you look for? Because they're often wearing hoodies uh, or beanies and they are in stolen cars. So how do you actually identify them? Oh, look, it's, it's like everything, um, any crime we investigate. We, in Counties Manukau, our major crime team are looking at them, so we, our detectives are investigating these. Um, we treat them seriously. We do absolutely everything we can. We use a range of investigative tools, and, and we really want to identify those responsible um, so that this offending does not continue. The 42% that we are identifying, how many of those are charged with a crime? Um, look, I, I don't have those exact figures. Um, what I can say is that for those we do identify, um, we put them through the relevant pipeline for them. Um, so some of those will go through the justice section, but we, we're dealing with children as young as 11 driving cars and involved in these ram raids. So um, for those, um, we refer them to our youth services. Um, but that's what we're trying to say. It's a wider problem than just what police are doing. We are working on these. We are investigating them. We are dealing with offenders. Um, but there's other stuff that the wider community can do to contribute to this issue. So given that the majority of those 42% that we are identifying will be youth offenders, it's unlikely that they will actually be charged with anything, that they'll go through the youth justice system, right? Is this part of the problem? Do, does police need more repercussions for these individuals? Do you think that would help you? Look, just because it's a young person doesn't mean they won't be dealt with or charged. Um, every, every case is an individual. Um, we have the tools we need, we have the laws we need. Um, what we're saying is that this is, this is a bigger problem. When we've got 11 year olds out in the middle of the night driving stolen cars, crashing into retail stores, there's a bigger problem out there. There's a part that other people can play, social media, um, parents, the wider community, keeping these kids engaged in school, um, and people who are receiving these stolen goods. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that can be done and it's not just a police issue to solve. Is this thousands of young people every night doing one-off hits or is there a small number of a core group of, of young people who are doing it repeatedly, do you think? 
Oh, I think it's a mix. Um, there are definitely some repeat offenders that we're dealing with um, and, and those are identified and they are put through the appropriate channels. Um, but, the, but the problem is, you know, as, as these things, there, there are a lot of kids involved um, in these incidents. We're having cars full of young people. Um, so while some of them are repeat offenders, um, we worry about the others that are being brought into this offending. And every time a young person is in a stolen car in the middle of the night, there's a risk that's going to end up in a tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a woman named Anna Zeng who owns a liquor store in Auckland. She's 55 years old. She spoke to the Herald. She owns the Sandringham Liquor Store with her husband. Um, and she was robbed twice in November last year, last Tuesday, last Thursday, and was ram raided in March. Her husband is sleeping in the store every night with a bat and he's sleeping on a chair because he doesn't want to nod off in case his store is burgled or ram raided. Do you advise people to sleep in their stores to try and protect their stores like that? Oh, look, that, that would worry me, someone sleeping in the store with the risk of a car crashing into it. But look, I understand why these, why the retailers are so worried. This is their livelihood. Um, for for the, what has actually been taken in a lot of these cases, the damage and the harm being done to their retail stores is huge. Um, so absolutely, we understand it. Um, we are doing everything we can to address this issue. Um, and... You know, I want to reassure our retailers that we are taking this seriously um, and we do understand their concerns. What's your advice to them? Should they be sleeping in their stores? Look, I can't give advice on specific situations, but I, I would suggest that it's not a good idea to be sleeping in somewhere um, where, you know, to protect your store from cars crashing into it in the middle of the night. What we don't want is this to end in a tragedy um, involving someone in a store, involving the young people, or involving just a member of the public. So anything we can do to avoid that um, has, has to be done. And what about weapons? Just very quickly, would you... I mean, what, what's police's position on them having weapons in their stores? Oh, look, members of the public are, you know, are, are governed by the laws of the land, such as we all are. Um, so we can't, you know, we, we don't support people having weapons. Um, they could be used against them. We understand that people are frustrated. Um, we're doing everything we can. There are steps that they can take to try and protect their businesses that don't involve that sort of thing. Um, we understand it's expensive, there's costs involved, but a far safer option is bollards, having good CCTV, good good doors, security doors on their businesses and taking things into their own hands.